The best way that I can put what this organization offers to the community is that we provide a second chance to lost, abandoned, and stray animals, and by bringing them together with loving families. Not only do we provide a loving environment for these animals, but we also provide love to the families by bringing a four-legged companion to their lives. We had lost um, two cats within two years, uh, both we were very close to, and so I, I felt a void in our lives. And you can never replace a lost cat, you can never replace two lost cats, uh, but when Logan was adopted, I, I felt like my family was starting to become whole again. We offer um, homeless animals in the community a second chance at loving homes, and we also provide um, people with you know, companions that provide unconditional love um, through adoption in our organization. I think the thing I like the most about him, especially like when my girlfriends and stuff are over here, he comes and he always looks at them and he always has his Elvis Presley smile when the girls come over to visit and stuff. But uh, he's very friendly, he's very loving. And I just, I just don't get it why people got rid of him. I just, I don't get it because he's such a sweet boy. He just makes me happy. We always, always, always keep our animals until they are adopted. Homeward Animal Shelter rescues and rehomes over 800 animals each year. Well, we got her through a foster care situation and she had heartworm, so she needed to be around no other animals and we currently didn't have any foster animals and she's super cute. <laughs> and it took about two hours before we loved her, so then we adopted her after she was healthy. I just have always really loved animals and that's why I decided to get a degree in veterinary technology is to work with animals and then I realized my passion was really in helping the homeless animals because those animals need a little more extra help um, finding the people um, that will be able to take care of them. I think a lot of people don't realize that we are just, you're a local private nonprofit so we don't receive um, funding from any national organizations, we really rely on the local community to to keep our doors open and to keep doing what we do every day with rescuing and rehoming these animals. The funny story with Rudy is that we had no plans necessarily of adopting a dog, but we were driving out to the lakes country one day and there was a little, uh, at that time the Humane Society had a little um, pet fair off the side of Highway 10 and Emma at that time was probably 10 years old or so and uh, she said, hey dad, there's dogs over there. So I pulled across two lanes of traffic, hauling my boat, and then made a left turn across Highway 10 and all kinds of traffic. We stopped over there, and Rudy was one of the dogs. And Rudy, right away, was somebody who nuzzled up to us, and most importantly, nuzzled up to my wife, because my wife, uh, Michelle, was very hesitant about getting a dog. She was not a dog person when she was growing up, but uh, we had a chance to visit with Rudy there, and then Emma and I, our daughter Emma and I, badgered Michelle, into at least bringing Rudy home for a little test run, for a little foster for a week or two. And uh, Michelle said, fine, we can do that. And we got Rudy in the house. And then again, him being the smartest dog ever in the history of the world, completely, completely takes over and sucks up to Michelle totally and just totally makes her his favorite person. And after, it was supposed to be a two week trial. And after one week, Em and I looked at Michelle and said, hey, can we? And Michelle said, yes, we can. And so we were able to adopt Rudy, and uh, it was just something that wasn't, wasn't planned, wasn't expected. We didn't have some big grand scheme to do this, but once we got him in the house and once he figured out who he needed to, to make happy, <laughs> he, d he did that, and then this is him now. Now he lives on a couch and sleeps in beds and everything else. After all this work, the most rewarding part of the job is seeing a dog or a cat go home. It's hard to see with the cats, but when you watch a dog going home, I can tell you, in all honesty, as if they know. I mean, the, the, the tail wags in a different way, the eyes are sparkling in a different way. They are so excited as if to tell us, oh my God, look, I love you guys, but I gotta go because I got myself a family. That is what makes everything work. He uh, instantly melted my heart, so very quickly once we were home, even after so um, 
he traveled for work a lot and he got called out to work the night we picked up Basil and um, sooner than we thought. And the next day my grandpa died and um, I was like, I was alone and I said my grandpa died after I hung up and he came over and laid his head in my lap. And so, and that was the first day we had him. So, <laughs> um, but he is a big gentle giant, unless you're a toy. Toys must be destroyed apparently is the mentality, but otherwise he's very big hearted and just very sweet. I think the most rewarding part of this job is seeing um, these animals going into their homes. Uh, each one of them finding that, that special family, that perfect match for them. My name is Nuket Hendricks. I am the executive director of the Homeward Animal Shelter. I have been in my role since 2006 because I wanted to be a part of being a voice to the animals who cannot speak for themselves. And um, our work at the Homeward Animal Shelter brings pets and people together and provides an incredible second chance at a loving home for these animals who have been abandoned, lost, or running the streets stray.